Coming to you from Radnor, Pennsylvania, this is your Location Sports Update. Hi, I'm Allie Stein and this is Sports on Location. And I'm Joan Nowaski and this is your weekly sports update. The Cabrini men's lacrosse team had another exciting win on Saturday, just one week after their 9-8 overtime win over number 5 Lynchburg College. The Cavaliers welcomed Dickinson College to Edith Robb Dixon Field and defeated the Devils 12-11. Freshman Matt Laparo scored the winning goal with .6 seconds left in overtime. Laparo had an additional two goals earlier in the game. With this win, the Cavaliers now have a 3-0 record on the season. After three victories, members of the men's lacrosse team are receiving an additional honors off of the field. For the second straight week, junior Evan Downey was named CSAC Offensive Player of the Week. Downey led the Cavaliers in Saturday's game against Dickinson with three goals and an assist. Additionally, sophomore goaltender Tyler Morrell has been named to the league's honor roll, recording a total of 11 saves during the game against the Devils. The convenience of living on campus is something that commuters do not experience. This creates some challenges for those students who live at home and are also athletes. I think commuter athletes have to be a little bit more um, prepared, I guess you could say, because you know if it started out sunny in the beginning of the day, and then so I packed my practice clothes for shorts and a t-shirt, but then it comes 4:30 and it's pouring rain. I mean, I'm kind of in bad luck with that. I try to leave all of it in my car <laughs> to uh, like be on time for practice, so that's pro that probably helps me. Um, Cause last year I know on campus, like if I forgot something, I had to run all the way back to my room and then be back on be back to, uh, to the gym for practice. But uh, being off campus and having a car kind of helps me like be more prepared because I just leave things in my car. Just being prepared. I mean, I got to be packed for the whole day. I got to have lunch. I got to have dinner. I got to have snacks. I got to have clothes. I got to have stuff for afterwards if I got to go to the library and study. And Especially during um, the season where we have practice. I have like three classes a day, 815, 940, and 1230. And then practice normally around three or five. So I'll probably try and get back home for an hour. But then like my sleeping schedule will be thrown off because of the homework I have to do and things like that. So the biggest challenge would be waking up. But in the fall, we had to keep our equipment in, the, um, in our dorms because uh, our locker rooms aren't finished yet, but next year, when the locker rooms are all finished, we'll be able to keep our gear in there. Um, the advantage is you're on campus and you're close to the facilities and the field, so you're able to uh, practice more. And um, it's easier when there's like an early practice to get here, as opposed to the guys who live like 15 minutes away. I wouldn't say my, uh, my equipment is too inconvenient because, I mean, with basketball, it's a pair of basketball sneakers and, you know, practice gear and stuff. And sometimes we even wash it here. And then with lacrosse, I mean, I got cleats, a stick, and goggles. I mean, it's all I really need. Being on time for practice is probably the hardest part because I got to drive five, ten minutes away. And then there's always, like, traffic, or not even traffic, but, like, there's construction sometimes on wheelie, so I might have to take a different way, make sure I'm there on time to be prepared. But that's about it. Many teammates have made accommodations for students who are in these situations. While the men's lacrosse team held their spring break training right here in Radnor, other teams traveled to warmer places to kick off the 2016 season. The women's softball team trained and competed in Clearmount, Florida over the break. The Cavaliers faced six different teams throughout the course of the week, including John Carroll and number 11, Alma College. After a few tough losses, the Cavaliers topped Capital University 3-2. Be sure to head to Cabrini Field on March 19th for the Lady Cavs' 2016 home opener against Immaculata University. The Philadelphia Eagles have been in the news this past weekend for more reasons than one. Formal Eagles player Earl Wolf of the Jacksonville Jaguars has recently been a victim of an armed kidnapping. He returned safe to his home this past weekend and has requested to not speak about the incident. This past weekend, one of the greatest players in the history of the Eagles franchise, Al Wistert, passed away at the age of 95. Wistert's number 70 jersey has been retired by the team, and he will forever be known as one of the greatest players to be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The Philadelphia team is also in the news for its recent trade of DeMarco Murray, sending him to the Tennessee Titans. Murray will bring some strong offensive experience to his new home, which is much needed. One of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history has officially retired from the game that he loves. Peyton Manning informed the Broncos that he will be retiring after a strong 18-year career. Number 18 will forever be remembered for holding five MVP trophies, two Super Bowl championships, and dozens of passing records. We wish Manning the best of luck in his future endeavors. 
So, Allie, it looks like Manning actually retired. I know, just like we predicted. I guess we'll have to see how next season plays out without him. Thanks for watching Sports on Location. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms by simply searching Location News. I'm Allie Stein. And I'm Joan Oiski. Have a great week, Cabrini.